To begin the burlap mandala, you're going to want to start by trimming any edges off of your burlap that might be crooked and then putting a masking tape border around the back so that it stops your burlap from fraying or breaking apart. I did not put masking tape on this edge. I ended up getting an edge that was stitched. I'm going to leave that on there. You could trim it off if your piece is like that and you don't like it. I'm going to flip it over and a mandala that we learned about is circular. So we're going to start with the largest circle tracer you have and you can find a crayon color that is going to show up on your burlap. So I am tracing this circle with black. I can see it pretty well on my red. My second tracer is going to be my next largest and as I place this I'm looking that I have a similar border all the way around that I have this circle in the middle and not kind of pushed to a side. With the crayon, I find it better to have, I have to kind of pick it up and go over it a couple of times to get a nice outline. You're going to trace three different sized circles. So just make sure it's not off centered and that it's in the middle as best as you can. Then we are ready to stitch. You're going to start with one color. You might have to travel to the yarn station. I've got a piece of white here and I noticed I actually have a knot in it. I'm going to kind of cut this in half. It's going to give my a shorter yarn. And I got a knot here too, but that's okay. Um, an arm stretch of yarn is probably a good way to start. Three ways to get this needle on. Number one, I'm holding my needle with my writing hand. I'm going to take that needle and go back and forth with my writing hand to get the yarn through the eye and I can pull. If that doesn't work, try making a loop at the end of your yarn. I'm going to pinch that loop tight and with my writing hand I'm sliding that needle back and forth and the loop should pull through. If that's still not working, up at the yarn station there are some small pieces of paper. I want you to put your yarn, the tail of your yarn, in that paper and fold it. Kind of like a hot dog in a bun. I am going to take the eye of my needle and put it in that folded edge of the paper and pull through. Takes my yarn with it. No matter how your yarn gets on that needle, we're going to double knot it. That means one knot, make that cross with your yarn, pull it through the hole, and tie. I have a double knot. My needle is not going to fall off. All right. Whenever we start stitching, we start on the back side, and we come up. And I'm going to start with this outline around the edge. So my needle is under my fabric, and I'm pulling and pulling and pulling until I get a tiny tail on that back side. When we have those tiny tails to start, we're going to tape them down. I'm going to try to tape on the perimeter right on top of the tape that's already there. All right, a review of a running stitch and a back stitch. My yarn is on top, the running stitch dives down, and I pull. Now my yarn is underneath, it's going to pop up. This is a running stitch there's going to be a space that's empty. It's going to look like a dotted line. My yarn is at the top. I'm going to go down. As I'm stitching, I'm trying to keep these the same um, size. They're about a finger space. So the running stitch pattern is up, pull, down, pull, and repeat. Up, pull, down, pull. If you can remember, there is a little hack to the running stitch, something that can make it go a little faster and it only works for the running stitch. I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to dive down. And then with my needle, I'm going to dive up and down and up and down and up. And I'm staying on that circle. So now my needle is woven. I can pull the yarn through just like that. Your job is to make an outline around the outside using the back stitch or the running stitch. If you have to poke through tape, you can do it. It just slows you down a tiny little bit. <clears throat> so let's pretend that I just did that whole outside circle with a running stitch. And now I'm ready for another circle. If you want to switch yarn colors, you could. Fast way to end a yarn. Do an airplane dive. That means I'm taking my needle on the back side and I'm going to dive down and under another piece of yarn and pull it. 
And I'm going to do that two times. I'm going to dive down through another piece of yarn and pull it. And that is enough for our stitching, our embroidery, to end it. You could cut this off and get a new piece of yarn. Okay? For the video, I'm just going to stick with white. Let's pretend I just did a running stitch around one circle. On at least one stitch, or on at least one circle, you need a running stitch. On one stitch circle, you need a back stitch. So I'm going to jump to the second circle. I'm starting on the back, same way, pulling through. I'm going to tape that tail around the edge. And the back stitch goes down and pulls, comes up and pulls, and here's where it changes. The back stitch goes backwards into that last hole and down, and it makes it look like a solid line. I come up about a finger space away and pull, and I dive back down into that last stitch. So the word back means backwards, right? We're going back. That's how it got its name, back stitch. So on these three outline circles, you need to show a back stitch and a running stitch. That is the first step. On my finished example, the purple is a running stitch, the white is a back stitch, and then I chose to do another running stitch. One, two, three circles is how we're starting this project. We'll talk about the other stitches in between them, 